Okay, kids. Jay brought a performance here again. Uh, one more stab at this C4 factory forward pattern manual valve body. Uh, pretty cool stuff. I've got it working now. Uh, what happened here, if you watched the last video, I'll show this to you. I had to drill a little hole here. Um, like I said, I spent a little bit of time mapping this out. So what I noticed was it actually vents out through one of the governor passages. So if it's in the unit, the governor's not there and the oil will vent through the case no problem. But on this valve body dyno, that's hooked up to gauges and a, a valving system to simulate the governor. So that's not going to work so all I've got to do in a case like this is just drill a little vent hole it's not going to affect it at all it's just going to make it work on my valve body dyno is basically all that is um, so we're going to run this again here so you can see it uh, I'm just going to go over the gauges real quick okay so high reverse uh, also known as direct clutch this is the intermediate servo release side uh, intermediate servo apply side this is the low reverse band in this particular transmission and then this is the forward clutch um, a lot of other gauges here but those are the only ones that we're looking at uh, this here this does work this is your converter charge uh, not real concerned with that pressure but I do make sure when I test these valve bodies that there is oil, you know, and uh, adequate pressure going to the converter and the lube circuit. So that is something that you actually want to check when you dyno these things. But uh, anyways, so somebody was kind enough to put in the comments what this transmission is actually from. And um, I checked out the story and man, this is weird. Uh, 1970 Maverick, uh, one year only, and I believe just in the Maverick from what I'm reading, in a six-cylinder Maverick, some of these had an optional, uh, they call it a semi-automatic transmission. Uh, again, 1970 Ford Maverick, and it's a six-cylinder, one year, one car, as far as I can tell. Uh, at least from what I've been reading and trying to look up on it. Not a lot of information on it. But, um, I don't know. I don't know what possessed Ford to make something like that. I can't imagine anybody wanted it. I'm shocked as hell. I've, one of these transmissions has even left. I, they must have sold three of them. I, I have no idea. Really goofy. And it was uh, forward pattern, full manual. And it was on the column. Uh, I hope they had a good reverse lockout on it, or uh, it sounds like it makes some interesting driving. You know, you have just normal people trying to drive this car and manually shifting an automatic on the column. It sounds like a disaster. So anyways, I don't believe they ever did this again or uh, did it in any, you know, I just think this was a one and done for them. Uh, again, I can't imagine they these would sell so really weird anyways let's run this thing I'm gonna show it to you and I'll kinda of tell you what I think of it uh, I've got to open this side of it uh, the shift handle I've got to shift it here with this handle so let's get this fired up alright so we are in reverse and you notice the pressure, so reverse high clutch, release side of the servo is on, low reverse servo is on. Uh, we do not have oil in apply side, no oil in the forward clutch, and our converter charge is full pressure. So all that looks good. So that's reverse. And you're gonna notice here, reverse is boosted. So I'm going to shift down into manual one. So here we go. So all the, you know, high, 
my year is off. Uh, and let's look at our converter charge. That has dropped as well. So we don't have boost on anymore. They're running reverse boost, which is not typical of your aftermarket valve bodies. They basically just run high pressure in all gears. Uh, but this being a you know very mild engine and a street car they don't want a lot of pressure it's just going to make hard shifts and wear the pump and all that pressure is pretty conservative it's around 120 so we've got oil on the forward which is good and look at this uh, pretty low pressure about 35 pounds or so on this low reverse servo and that is normally regulated in manual low Seems a little low. You don't need a lot of pressure there, but I'd probably like to see maybe 50 pounds or something like this, but that's okay. Uh, no, I'm not a big deal. It works. I'm just used to much bigger engines and more powerful engines, so we're going to shift a second, and then you see a fly come on. Okay, that's your servo apply. Low reverse servo comes off. And forward is still on. And I apologize for the noise here. And then I'm going to shift up into third. Watch your high, high and release come on. Okay, that comes on nicely. Apply stays on, which is good. And I'm going to talk about that in a second. Uh, low reverse is still off. And forward should still be on. So I'm just going to up and down shift this a couple times so you can watch the gauges. Second, first, second, third, second, first, second, and third. And I'm going to turn that off. Enough of that noise. Um, that way maybe you can hear me. So, pretty cool little valve body. Pressure is pretty conservative, but again... 120 pounds in forward gears is probably just fine. Maverick's a Philly-like car. Six-cylinder engine, not a lot of power, I'm sure. So, uh, good job, guys. It uh, works real well. Now, what I like about this valve body, and this is what I actually try to incorporate into my designs, you hear a lot of people talking about the 2-3 shift flare. And what that means is the... When you shift a second, I'm um, sorry, when you shift from second to third, what happens is the engine kind of revs up for a second and then it catches. It just gives you that little overspeed on the 2 3 shift. And that's real common on this unit. And it's more common on aftermarket valve bodies, manual valve bodies with trans brakes and things. Not as much of a problem on auto shifts. Uh, if it is a problem on an auto shift, it's usually typically just a sealing issue, uh, bad clutches, or could be just the pressure is not adequate for the application. Pressure may not be rising like it should, things like that. So what happens here, now you may be wondering when you see it shift in a third, you saw oil still going to the apply side of the servo. Well that's okay because release comes on. Release side of the servo is larger and there's also a spring so it overcomes that and it pushes that servo off so the band is not on in third gear. That's how that comes off and what happens is when people design these valve bodies the apply oil goes away and then they bring the third gear clutch in well, when the apply oil from the servo goes away, you momentarily shift back into first gear before high gear comes in. Uh, this is all happening in a fraction of a second, but because you're letting go of the band, it's like I said, it's kicking back into first gear momentarily until high gear comes in and clamps up. And the more power you have, the longer this takes and I'm gonna go over that stuff in another video but uh, to wrap up here I'm not gonna make a long video on this I don't know 
I don't have a lot of time these days and I don't know when I'm going to get around to actually rebuilding this transmission and at some point I'm going to restore it and I'm, I'll dyno test it on the transmission dyno and see how everything works there and I might tweak this a little bit so it doesn't have only 120 pounds of pressure in forward but I, I don't know. I don't know if anybody wants to buy this thing or if we're just going to kind of keep it as a showpiece. I honestly don't know what we're going to do with it. So, uh, But this will probably be the last video I'll do on it for quite a while. If anybody's got any interest in this thing, let me know. And uh, Maybe somebody's got this car and it's got the shifter that says um, that it's a semi-automatic. Uh, that's what they called it, a semi-automatic. And it actually says it right on the shift indicator. So if you happen to have this 1970 Maverick and you need this transmission, uh, I'd be surprised if there's anybody that has this car, but let me know. I've got the transmission if you need it. Or if you need it rebuilt or need help with it, I've, I understand it and I'm capable of rebuilding it for you if that's what you need. But anyways, uh, I'm going to wrap this video up. I'll do another video at some point on explaining more of this 2-3 shift flare. Th this is such a common subject, and everybody seems to have trouble with this and obsesses over it. And How do I get rid of it? How do I get rid of it? Well, oh, most of the time it's a valve body design issue, and most of the time what I recommend is one of our valve bodies. Uh, this is typically, like I said, an issue with full manual stuff. Not so much with auto shift. If auto shift is built properly and you know you put a good valve body modification kit in it or whatever, they're usually fine. They don't typically flare unless they're having an issue. But uh, it's the full manual stuff really that gives people trouble and it's just a bad valve body design. It's a much simpler to make it uh, without the apply staying on in third gear, uh, it is more work to make it have that stay on. I know that seems weird, but if anybody that's ever messed around with these and try to make their own valve bodies or maybe somebody that does make their own valve bodies, you're going to be fighting that flare forever if that apply is not staying on. So again, I'll go over that in more detail on another video and when I'm more prepared for that and I'll have some things to show you and show you the circuit and explain all that how that works and the shifts and everything anyways thanks for watching this and I hope this was interesting to you uh, pretty cool little valve body I don't think I'm gonna steal any design aspects of it for my own stuff but it, it was very interesting to see and I will probably map it out more thoroughly one day. It does utilize shift valves, and they did remove accumulation. And if you see the gauges when you shift, they come up kind of slow, and which is good because they made the shifts kind of soft. You know, the people didn't want these to bang into gear like you motorheads do. Uh, most people don't want that. Uh, just, you know, guys with race cars and things, they... They feel like if it doesn't slam into gear on the shifts, it's not, it's going to burn the clutches and things. And that's something else to discuss too at some point, how beneficial that really is. But in any case, that is not the factory's goal. They want these shifts smooth. Just looking at this, this obviously is not anything like driving the car and feeling these things, but just from experience watching the gauges and things and looking at the valve body and how they have it orifice and things, I can tell it probably shifted pretty reasonably smooth. I wouldn't say it was a slush box, but I bet you it's not. But it's not going to be super hard shifts either. Pretty nice, honestly, uh, you know, for a driver. Uh, you know, so thumbs up to Ford on this, honestly. I did say, you know, it is a little more complicated than it needs to be, and... I kind of stand behind that statement, but I'm really making that statement based on my needs here. And I think for what they were trying to accomplish, good job, of course, as always. And 
Uh, Ford's got some great products. And I always admired Ford because they experimented with weird stuff like this. So you don't see too many oddball things like this from a GM product. Uh, Ford took a lot of chances, and I commend them for it. So anyways, um, appreciate you watching the video, and we'll see you on the next one.